ASEAN was designed to fail. It was supposed to fail because Southeast Asia is the most diverse corner of planet Earth. You have 240 million Muslims, 120 million Christians, 150 million Buddhists, Mahayana Buddhists, Hinayana Buddhists. You have Taoists, you have Confucianists, you have Hindus. You have every, every group. And yet, this group, which should see a clash of civilizations, is actually seeing a fusion of civilizations. And why has that happened? And I think part of it is due to the fact that Indonesia, as the largest country within ASEAN, shared its values with the other ASEAN countries. And the Indonesians have developed a culture of what is called Mushawara and Mufakat, consultation and consensus. And that idea of consultation is consensus is very, very un-Western. In the Western system, if you create an organization, you must vote. So the majority vote wins, right? It's majority decision making. That's the Western system. The Indonesian culture is, hey, let's talk to each other and try to achieve a consensus. And it has worked. And that's why uh, the rest of the world uh, should come and learn from ASEAN. And for example, it's actually quite amazing that the Association of Southeast Asian Nations uh, was created on 8th August 1967. It is now almost 51 years old. And till today, you don't have an association of North East Asian nations, ANIAN, to match ASEAN. Why is that so? Why can't Mongolia, North Korea, South Korea, Japan, China form an association of Northeast Asian nations? And you see, just by making the comparison between Northeast Asia and Southeast Asia, you see that Southeast Asia, which had actually two big wars, Northeast Asia had one big war, the Korean War, since World War II. And yet, Southeast Asia today has achieved a real sense of harmony and community by following the Indonesian values of consultation and consensus, whereas Northeast Asia hasn't succeeded yet. So this is where Northeast Asia can learn some lessons from Southeast Asia. There are many uh, ancient uh, Chinese values uh, that are obviously similar uh, to the values of Southeast Asia and the emphasis on uh, harmony that you find in Chinese culture is quite similar to the emphasis on harmony you find in Southeast Asian uh, culture too. So I would say it is uh, similar and certainly the fact that uh, China has emerged peacefully uh, as a great power over 14 years is a modern miracle. Because when most great powers emerge, you tend to have conflict. And the fact there's been no conflict uh, is a great tribute uh, to China. It's very important that when it comes to the differences on the South China Sea, and this is not between, these differences are not between China and ASEAN because uh, only four member states of ASEAN, Philippines, Vietnam, Brunei, Malaysia are claimant states. The other six are not claimant states. And uh, it's important that you have good bilateral discussions to solve this issue. But at the same time, uh, the good news is that uh, ASEAN and China are working together on a code of conduct to manage uh, the differences on the South China Sea. And I hope that this code of conduct will be achieved soon because that's another signal that the Asian countries can try and find solutions in a harmonious way rather than in a militaristic way, which is the old Western way of solving problems. And you know, my sense of uh, China is that if you look at the history of China and its management or and resolution of border disputes, China has been very generous uh, to its neighbors, uh, to Russia, to Vietnam in solving these border disputes. And I think at the end of the day, uh, all countries must look at their larger interests 
and not focus on a few uh, territorial areas because at the end of the day what's more important is a good relationship between China and its neighbors more than the territory or maritime areas that are the sources of the dispute China by the way uh, has said publicly several times that unlike America it believes in the international convention on the law of the sea United Nations convention of the law of the sea China has ratified it and America hasn't ratified it so in this regard actually China is a model for America to follow uh, in the South China Sea